Welcome guys, we're at the USS Albacore in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We're gonna do a tour of the submarine and then we're gonna go into the gift shop and um, they also have a museum in there. So we're gonna uh, take a little tour and check things out and join us. So this submarine was used for testing purposes only when it was an active submarine. So if they had any new technologies, um, they would they would test it out on this and make improvements as needed. And now it, it rests in peace. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Able to enjoy. All right, here we go. We're entering the hull. One thing I wanted to mention is how thick these walls are. That's the actual thickness of the walls. It's unbelievable. The amount of metal that is between the ocean water and the interior of the sub. All right, so here are the beds. Some of the beds, anyway. You gonna take a nap, Zach? Yeah. How would how would you like to sleep in this thing? Good. Yeah. But I just I don't really know about that. That would just be kind of weird, just where your feet are. I can't believe people mm. slept in this. It's, what is this? If you, if you have claustrophobia, this is not your your place for sure. I don't even think it's meant for tall people like me. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't. For... I wouldn't fit. Well, back then. Back so... then, people were shorter, right? Exactly. So they designed it to fit with the people. These, right. these are regular sized people beds. Yeah. Probably regular sized people are maybe a little bit taller than me. Alright, Ford escape trunk. Normal entry yeah. and exit when in port. You can't go this. So, they would just loosen that up. And it would open the hatch. Get out. I would rather sleep over here. Oh, who would sleep up there, Dad? Who would sleep? You're, sleep oh. you're sleeping with the pipes. You're sleeping with the pipes. I almost just fell. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Gotta look where I'm going. Why would you sleep up there? Look at that. You're sleeping with all that, the pipes and the tubes and electrical wire. Oh, check it that out. Asbestos. Uh, the best bed is this bed. You think that's yeah, the best this, one right there? Why? Oh no, this is the best one. Yeah, because it's, it's yeah. just a bed. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, yeah, no. there's nothing sticking out. Yeah, no. It's an open space. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I would want to sleep too. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving. This is just the beginning. These little openings are so small, you have to like duck down. Duck down through here. Yeah, your Tommy high picture is underwear. Is there my face? What? Your Tommy high picture underwear is Showing a little underwear on that yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a small pantry which held the dishes and silverware for the officer's mess. Food was prepared aft in the galley, brought forward and served out of this area. Opposite the pantry is the captain's stateroom. What's this? The captain usually had a room to himself, but because of the small number of berthing spaces, there was a second bunk for the executive officer. This is the state room. There was underbed storage, a Pullman sink, a desk with drawers for clothing, and an upright closet for hanging clothes. Note the instruments mounted at the forward end of the bottom bunk. These are there so the captain felt a bit like going. So this is where the dining room. I think this is for bigger people. Six feet and the trouble getting into the upper bunk. It's called the ward room. So it was a multi-purpose room. It wasn't just the dining room. Um, they they ate food. They played games in here. Read, watched movies. This is the some patrols in the middle of the hallway. Of course. Just amazing how much there is going on. The amount of technology that went into this. Some more sleeping quarters in here. Look at this little typing machine. Look at th this is a nice bedroom. There's a typing machine in it. Too. Oh yeah. Look at that. And then there's some sleep beds. 
This is the ship's office. Oh, there's a compass right here. Did I show you where you're going? Is a compass over there? Yeah, it's right here. Battery backup circuit breaker. There we go. I'm gonna go through another hatch. Oh, what's this? Oh, Zach, we have the bathroom right here. And this is a shower. About the size of a phone shower. Because fresh water was a scarce commodity. Oh, see, whoa, look at that. Shower was the going to happen. The shower. Needed it or not. <laughs> the second small space is the officer's head or toilet. A tank known Amazing. as a sanitary tank located below the deck holds the shower water and refuse material from the toilet until a tank is emptied by pressurizing it with air and blowing the contents into the sea. Lieutenant Hunter. Blowing the contents of sanitary tank to sea left some residual air pressure in the tank. Unless that pressure was vented off, the next user of the globe was in for a real surprise. Yes. This is, this is nice. There you go. Going through. Oh, look at, this is the nicest area. Careful. This is the coolest area. Look at, there's a map here too. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. And then, what's this? Looks like a ladder to get up, maybe to another hatch, yeah. escape hatch. Oh no, there's a second level, that's why. Oh, there's a second level? Yeah. Oh yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Oh, you can't go up there though. Yeah, yeah. It might be a, it might be a service level. This is where you control the submarine. We have the periscope here, like we saw in the museum. Zach, look at that. Look at what moves there. This thing, this oh, yeah. There's so many different like, technologies. It's so complicated. Look at all these gauges. Everything has a purpose. Every Zach, single thing. Be, be my coat. Oh, who would want it? That's like, oh, yeah. that's, a, that's the... Yeah, that's the yeah, engine see. room down that's there. That's freaky. That's scary. You don't want to go down there. Yeah. What if you drop something? Dro oh, yeah, I know. That's what the guy was saying. Oh, yeah. If you drop anything, you're never going to see it again. The sonar room has two aft-facing consoles. We relied upon sonar to be our eyes and ears when submerged. We have two types of sonar. Passive or listen only where the operator listened for sounds created by other ships, sea creatures, or the weather. There's also a big the other, compass. active sonar, required that we project a sound yeah, wave into the water it's, it's and listen for returning echo. Sonarman Ashley Fletcher. I remember the time we were coming out of the yard, and on our first dive, the bow dropped like a rock. I was in sonar watching the screen in front of me while sitting in my chair. Next thing I knew, the screen was up on the ceiling and we were headed straight down and bounced off the bottom several times. Fortunately, we were only in a couple of hundred feet of water. Opposite the sonar room on the deck is the master gyro compass. I wish and mounted on a bulkhead is the Loran, which is something like today's satellite navigation system. Loran used signals from two or more radio stations to provide lines of position, which the quartermasters plotted on special charts to determine the ship's position. This is the kitchen. Big mixer, coffee machine. So this is the cook right here. He was the chef quartermaster, Henry Graves. Within Albacore's tiny galley breakfast, lunch, soups, snack, and dinner was prepped every day using nothing more than two burners, two ovens, one deep fat fryer, albacores, two cooks, and two messmen fed a crew of 50 enlisted men. So it's 50 total crew members and five officers. So the albacore was an experimental submarine. It spent most of its time near a port. Consequently, this meant access to fresh ingredients and such unique delicacies as frog legs, 
lobster. Not often available aboard other maybe vessels. Dad, can you help getting down from the top? Bed? Hey. Hey, what are you doing up there? I'm sleeping. I just woke up. How do I get down? Um, you're going to need my help. All right, here we go. There's a bathroom. Yeah, check that out. Check it out. And then, then How many bathrooms? Check that Two. Bathroom. Two bathrooms here. Under the berthing and mess deck area is a second battery compartment identical to that up forward. You can see a submarine battery cell in the visitor center. At the end of this compartment is the crew's washroom and toilet facilities to serve the 50-man crew. The toilets were flushed using seawater and drained into a second sanitary tank located under the deck. Because fresh water was costly in electricity to make at sea, fresh water usage was pretty much limited to about a gallon per man per day. A partial sink full of water was used to take a bird bath. This consisted of brushing teeth, shaving, washing hands, face, and whatever parts of the body needed washing. Due to sanitation requirements, only the cooks, right. baker, and mess cooks do another hatch. Water limitation. The engine room. Under the deck of electricity to drive the main motors, charge the storage batteries, and provide service power for lights, hot water, cooking, and other housekeeping functions. These lightweight aluminum engines had a history of frequent breakdowns. One consideration for retiring Aldebor was the cost of either installing new engines or starting up a long dormant production line to make additional repair parts. Above your head, between the two engine spaces, is the after escape trunk. This trunk served the same purpose and functioned the same way as the one in the bow compartment. Located just after the escape trunk is an area known as maneuvering, and at its center is the propulsion cubicle. The cubicle was the watch station of the main power electricians. It was here the electricity from the main generators or the battery was applied to the Dad, what's this say? I was in maneuvering going on one of our piece beds when I heard a crackling sound and saw smoke come out of the cubicle. Whoa. Electrician Tony Zimbar secured the power to the main motors and announced, fire in the cubicle. The smoke stopped, so Tony then announced, fire's out. When Tony tried to restore it's power to the motors, nothing happened. Engine in here. He then notified Control he was unable to answer any bells. Whatever burned in the cubicle had disabled the main motors. So here we were at test step. And slowing so down with no way to throw ourselves to the surface. It was a couple of heartbeats later when I felt and heard the emergency blow system activated and we started on our way up to the surface. Oh, you're back? Oh, okay. On your left, I'm not sure. No. Kara, how would your cost of On your left are the two main propulsion motors. When the doors close? Yeah. Albacore was originally built with one motor, one shaft, and one propeller. You want to keep moving? As part of the phase four conversion yeah, package, down. this compartment was cut open and extended in length to accommodate a second main motor, which was placed aft of the original motor. Each motor could produce 7,500 horsepower. The original propeller shaft connected 7,500 horsepower in each, each engine. It's a lot of horsepower. The motors were wired such that they always turn Which doesn't surprise me, this thing must be really, really heavy. After the thresher was lost, the Navy developed a more effective system for blowing ballast tanks. We were the first to try out the improved system. Our first test was from 100 feet at a dead stop. The boat rose rapidly to the surface. The second test was to be from 500, but the captain decided to do one from 300 instead. When the boat began, step over the this thing to get over it. Is an L is a lower level in there? Yeah, Grace, can you get that? That's pretty amazing. And they can walk over, they can go down. So if you have to go down. And shot to the surface just fine. Can I go back to the area? Yeah. What do you guys think of that? That's really cool. Really cool, huh? Yeah. Good 
I was like, Who's I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Oh, Dad. Oh, you like us? Please tell us. These mugs. What's this? Really cool. Okay, thank you. That's this. Whoa, is that a wind up summary? Ooh, oh, that is really you? cool. How does that work? Okay. Pull the propeller, still a while, winding up the base crank. Place the sub underwater and let go of the propeller. It's really cool. So it moves, moves too. Some books about the history. These are wind ups. Oh, yeah. Cool. Everything, everything submarine. Yeah, look at it. Oh, yeah. Ah. Birdie? Yeah, it's a seagull. Oh, yeah, it's a normal. seagull. Seagull. That's cute. Seagull. Oh, they have a compass there. An old school compass. You don't see those much anymore. Oh, look at that. That's really cool. So I'm, I'm wondering, I haven't used the like, compass for Now we have GPS. We don't need compasses anymore unless you're in the middle of the woods without a phone. Sailor hat. Kara, how do I look? That's my look right there. <laughs> So here's the model of the album car right here. So it was an operation from 1953 to 2003. The old uniforms. So these are the plates that they have on board. Very cool. Uh, look at the, this is, these are the old radios. Wow, look at that. I wonder if these were radios that were used on the actual yeah. submarine or not. There it is, right there. Mom, look at one of them got stuck on there. Yeah. Right. They're in there for years. What's this thing? Submarine storage battery cell. Wow. This is a demonstration model of typical battery cell that would have been found in Albacore, showing the arrangement of its interior parts. Batteries have come a long way. <sighs> what, do you call, what do you call this set? Uh, Periscope, right? Yeah. What do you see when you look out there? Do you see the outside? Yeah. You do? It's hard to see through there with this thing. No, so Kayla, what do you see in there? I see cars. You see the parking lot? Want to record it? Yeah, I am. No, when you can have to I know, I tried looking in there, but it, the camera won't really pick it up. But this sticks out of the ceiling, out of the roof. So you can see the parking lot. Really cool, yeah, it is. That's really cool. So here are all the submarines that the Navy used from back, looks like back in 1943. Here's a picture of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. It's located in Kittery, Maine. Oh, look at someone. Oh, Zach, look at, they have a Sour Patch drink? No, I want I want to get that for my birthday, Dad. Let's get one of those for my birthday, Dad, so I can drink on my birthday. I've never heard of that before. Just got out of the gift shop. Here are the 
some old propellers that they used in the submarine. These are the actual propellers. These things are huge. The original built to use a single large propeller in the sea, Albacore was later outfitted with two propellers as part of an experiment to provide greater propulsion efficiency. One of the three smaller propellers was a spare for Albacore, while the other two are from the USS Jack, SSN 605. The only other U.S. submarine to have a counter-rotating propeller propulsion system. Albacore's hull was designed with underwater speed as the prime requirement. Scale models of the hull were tested in tow tanks and wind tunnels to determine the optimum hull design. Albacore was built with a newly developed high-strength steel hull. Along with these two innovations, Albacore was to serve as a test vessel for the newest designs in submarine technology. Throughout her career, she tested many innovative concepts. As a result, the U.S. Navy was able to refine these designs before incorporating them into the fleet. Albacore truly lived up to her motto, Prenuntius Futuri, or Forerunner of the Future. Chief Quartermaster Norm Bauer. There was a little history lesson on the submarine. Let's walk around here and check out these colors a little bit closer. size of these things. It's amazing how big they are. I don't even think the camera can really pick up the, the mass scale of this thing, but if you compare me to this, I mean, I think it's huge. Once they're on the submarine, they don't, have, they don't look as big, so it's more proportional to the, the size of that. It's like a pontoon boat. The pontoons look like big missiles. I don't think they are, but they look like it. I don't know if they shaped that on purpose or not. Make it look more intimidating, maybe. Yeah, so this is called the ghost ship. Ghost vessel. I think I know why they call it a ghost vessel. Because it must have been super quiet. Snuck up on enemies easily. That's cool. This is the Memorial Garden. memorial is dedicated to the 86 men who lost their lives serving their country on the submarines USS Albuquerque on November 7th, 1944. Something must have happened. Well, that pretty much wraps it up today. Hope you guys enjoyed it.